There's so many important topics that we can talk about. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Shaman Dow, and this is my co-host. Hi, my name is Jody Long. And this is The Real Talk with Jody and Dow. So Jody, how, how have you been? I've been excellent. And how about yourself? I've been really, really good. Very productive, very busy productive within this last week since we last spoke and met, but all good, all good. And the topic today that we decided on, um, would you like to go ahead and explain to everyone the topic that we're going to talk about today? Well, we started off and we came to a conclusion that the one question we would ask people is if they were happy. Mm. And most people would say that love figures directly in to how happy they are. Mm. And so one of the first things you learn is you need to define your terms. Mm. And when you think about defining love, you go, do people even know what that is? How many people have actually experienced it? And if they've experienced it, is it all of the love or is it just a little bit of love? How much love do we know about here on earth? And because of the NDEs, I know what love is on the other side. And obviously, I know what love is here. I will go into that a little bit further. But before we did that, what I wanted to do, because we're doing this it's, east, it's east, east and west, and I thought it would be kind of cool to find out from your perspective because you have extra insight as a shaman. So can you tell me what love looks like when you're working on people? That is a great question. What does love look like when I work on someone? What's really interesting in regards to that question is when I work with someone, how I see them and to get to the end result is to get them whole soul wholeness and to bring the part they lost during any traumatic times in this life or past life or parallel life to get them whole so they could feel complete before we even get to love the feeling of love of self and how they feel that from within i first need to get them to soul wholeness because where there are holes in in our auric fields or the imbalances and the missing soul fragments, anything we stuff in there, it gets lost. And it just, it's a dark abyss of just emptiness. And then I bring them back, have them feel soul wholeness. And a lot of times I knock the soul back into their body. So many times I have looked at my clients and their eyes just went clear and they were fully back into body and they were able to feel the essence of this life and embodiment. And from that moment, moving through the physical form and to feel the emotion of love, you know, the next steps after working through the astral and getting them to a soul wholeness from there, depending on the human and the experience and the lack of love that they have, they don't know much about in their upbringing or what that feels like. That's like a whole nother avenue <laughs> to move through. And so that's how I see it personally as I work with each individual. I've had through channeling experiences with my students. And sometimes, for example, uh, some of my clients, I'm channeled. And there's just a warm embrace of love that flows down from above and it holds us and it really folds into us and it holds us like an embrace. And we both know that it is absolute love in regards to the emotion that flows through us, similar to an electric shock that moves through you, but the slowest form that you could ever imagine. And It's a river nourishing and flowing through empty, dry banks. When I hear you describe this, is this something that you see or is it something that you feel or is it a combination of both? Both. It it really depends also in the field, in the dimensions that I'm in and I'm working in. 
in this realm, the third dimensional realm, the physical realm, I can sense and see it and I can see different things per person. In shamanism, what separates shamans from regular healers and psychic mediums and things like that is shamans, we shift consciousness to live in that reality. And what that means is we could flip into a dimension, another dimension, and that's our reality. And we are walking on the opposite side of what humans would see with their physical eyes. And a lot of psychic mediums, what they do is they see these visions and a lot of healers, they see these visions, but they're unable to go within those visions to be in that vision as is. And we could, you know, these in the visions with the beings and entities and things like that, we are able to be in that vision, quote unquote vision, but it's actually another dimension. And we shift our reality to be there and we are able to do things in this dimension that most people wouldn't be able to even go into. There's terms like astral projection and astral traveling and things like that. And so it really is dependent on what plane I exist on in in regards of the work, but seeing, feeling, touching, sensing, things like that, it really is dependent also, I feel, on each person and their strongest clear abilities. Do you know your clear ability, Jody? Mine is always vision. Okay. For some reason. But what I was going to ask you mm. is like, for instance, does love show itself to you as a consistent color? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I actually, uh, my strongest sense is sensing. So my my strongest clear is sensing. And my strongest clear is just clear cognizant, which is clear knowing. And for everyone who is listening, the clear abilities is just clear. So there's clairvoyant, clear seeing, clear audient, clear hearing, clear cognizant, clear knowing. There's clear gustant, clear taste, clear alien, clear smelling. So Jody's is clairvoyancy and mine's claircognancy. And I'm always fascinated by people who see all these colors and things like that. I do see colors, but it's not one of my stronger abilities. So I sense more. I sense, and I could feel, I could walk in into a room. I could walk next to a person and I immediately would go back. And so I immediately go back if and when it's not of love or of highest frequency, but there's people that I immediately (laughs) gravitate towards. I know when someone is of pure heart and when someone is of pure heart, given that many people, a lot of people have pure hearts, but many are jaded or clouded from all of the experiences in this life. And so there was a client that I had and uh, she was one of my first in-person clients in a while. And she had such heaviness, like energetic heaviness and darkness around her. But I just knew she was not the type of person that's going to manipulate or do anything. She's a pure heart. And she had very, very, very heavy attachments from her grandfather who attached himself and essayed, you know, essayed. So essayed all of his daughters and granddaughters. And so his spirit I found via her that was holding her down and back. So I know that she was of pure heart. And so I sense it and I know it more so than I see it. Do you see it, Jody? Um, I mean, I do have to sit there and focus a little bit, but yes, I do see it. One thing that I wanted to ask you has to do with, since you can feel it, does this feel different, this feeling, this love, does it feel different when you are on a different plane as opposed to, you know, you you're, you say that you go and you visit different realms. Does it feel different when you go to different realms? Yeah, it does. The first time I went out of body, I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> I was like, I came back into body and I was like, uh, this earth plane. We're going to talk about home because home is a place of love for a lot of people, but many people seek home outside of themselves. And one of the first times I traveled out of body and I went home, quote unquote, to my home far, far away, it felt just it like an overwhelming sense of being, feeling, smelling, sensing, pure 
uncut love, like the kind of love. It's like cinnamon in the holiday season, smelling cinnamon, sitting there by a warm fireplace and just feeling safe and cozy. And it hugged you from the inside out and it was surrounding you. And it was such a beautiful experience that the moment I came back into body, into this earth plane, into this dimension, I cried. I cried because I wanted to stay. I was like, I wanted to stay over there. That was one of the first times, but this was so long ago. And one of the first times and, and every person I meet, they would have the same reaction. They would just cry because they just knew that that was home and that was love. And then the separation of that, even though we're not separated, but the perception of it was a separation and coming back to this plane, it's painful. It is painful. With love, there's pain. The pain is the fear detachment once you have the love. That's what I just got. <laughs> I want to ask you, Jody, what color is love? It's probably the colors that they attribute to the heart. Mm. And those are pink and green. And I'm never quite sure why it's pink or green. Some people say it's because the energy comes in one side and goes out the other. So one side is pink, the other is green. Those are the colors that I've always associated with love. One, I think green, I also associate with healing as well. I also think you could probably attribute white to it. And the reason being is it just has all kinds of colors. You know, it's like a prism of colors. And it, the heart chakra is, seems to be the link that puts you with the other side. So in my viewpoint, I, I think that there's many different colors that you could associate with love because love is all there is. And therefore, it's all colors, really. All encompassing. Just a, just a thought. Yeah, huh? yeah, that's it's so pretty. And the pink color associated with love, which is really interesting, beginning of my journey, I would see and feel pink. And I associated that also with Mother Mary. And because Mother Mary has a pink rose at her feet, usually, when and if to be channeled with Mother Mary and by, it's just a wash of love. With that being said, I'd love to hear about the near-death experiences because for those of you that haven't listened to our first episode, Jody is the creator, her and her husband are the creator of Enderf.org. Near-death experience research foundation.org. So it's N-D-E-R-F.org. And the reason that this is so important is because the near-death experience and studying the other side is you are able to get a really good handle on what love is. What happens is a person has an experience of the spirit, and we call them near-death experiences. And we use the definition, this is what Jeff came up with, a lucid experience associated with perceived consciousness apart from the body occurring at the time of actual or threatened imminent death. That means these people have to be dead. So they die or they're imminently getting ready to die. They have an experience. They leave their body. They have an experience during this time that they are dead. Then they come back and they tell us what that experience was. And when a person is not defined by their body and their soul is free to be able to interact with the other side, other dimensions, they have many, many different experiences, but they all have a certain element. They have a certain commonality to them. And so a lot of times they will go over to the other side, you know, like they'll go out of their body they will go down a tunnel. These are things that they may or may not experience, but these are all common elements to the near-death experience. Mm -hmm. And they may see deceased beings. They see the light. There are so many things, the life review, many things on the other side that they see. I mean, beautiful landscapes, but 
what gets me is when they're in an alternate state and they come back and they'll tell us basically the three most common words that they use is light, love, and God. Mm. And many times these words and concepts are used interchangeably. And you get the idea that when people go over there, everything is happening at once. On a three-dimensional earth realm, what we see is separateness. You'll see duality because you'll see good, bad, light, dark. You'll see all these things that give you opposites. But on the other side, everything is pretty much one multidimensional concept. But yet we see it on this side as separate. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to explore the idea of what happens if you look at love and is it something that we learn from earth or is it something that is much more than what we know from earth? And I'll give you the summarized version and um, refer people to the near death experience research foundation.org. Uh, we have over 23 different languages and they have been hand translated. And so it's a very large project with over 5,000 of these experiences. But what's really exciting is that you're going to see the same concepts over and over. You're going to see people talk about love over and over and over again. And pretty soon you realize that all these, these things that they're talking about, it's all one thing. Were you around in the 70s? <laughs> one of the things that they had back then is called a disco ball. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And the disco ball has many different squares of mirrors and they're glued together so that they form a nice globe. But what's interesting is when light hits that globe, you're going to see different aspects of that mirror that's reflected back at you. And so you're never going to see quite the same thing on any mirror. And I, I think that a lot of times... You can look at the disco ball and the concepts that people talk about on Enderf or, you know, any kind of spiritual experience, really. And you'll start seeing how it all kind of flows together. And it's really, really similar. You can actually tell the difference between an earthly experience and a spiritual experience just because of the differences. And so... When you talk about descriptions of love in the near-death experience, they range from earthly love, such as love between a couple, to love between parents and children, to compassion and unconditional love. But one finding is that regardless of a person's age, race, social status, religion, where they live, or what country they're from, the descriptions of love are fairly similar in the near-death experience. And moreover, many of the descriptions of love, they're intertwined with other concepts, like we were talking about, most notably love and God. So you've got love, light, and God. And you've got some, these being, for instance, God may appear as a loving light. So you get these kinds of descriptions but what the NDEs show us is that our consciousness has interdimensionality. Mm. And I think that's why I was having so much fun talking to you about it, because I wanted to show that. I wanted to get that out there to show that love really does. You know, I mean, you're, you're a walking, living proof of it, you know, and you can just talk from experience. But now you look at, for instance, one of my favorite authors is Daniel Goleman. And he is internationally known psychologist. He's done work with the Dalai Lama. His book, Social Intelligence, it tells us that earthly love has three major systems for loving. Attachment, caregiving, and sexuality. You go, well, that's kind of limited. Yet when NDEers, they talk about NDEs, they talk about unearthly love. They seem to be talking about so much more than earthly concepts. What about the unity that they talk about, the connection, the multidimensionality. 
or the universal knowledge, thoughts, communications, you know, the telepathy, mm -hmm. or even the emotions. They all kind of roll into each other. The calm, peace, joy, happiness. You've got all of it. And yet all of these concepts are one thing. And I would call that love. Mm -hmm. Other people may want to separate it because we're on earth. So we separate things. But I think it's all one thing. A lot of the experiencers, the near-death experiencers, they would come oh. back from their experience. And do you know if many of these experiencers have experienced this type of feeling of love before in their human life, before they experience the near-death experience? I would have to say yes, but that's qualified yes. Mm -hmm. because like you were talking about, you had like an out-of-body experience and you went to another dimension and you did experience this love. You're going to find this type of love will be experienced by people with mystical experiences, spiritually transformative events, out-of-body experiences. It all depends on where they go. What dimension do they go to? Because if they go to a higher dimension than our 3D reality, they're going to be feeling this kind of love and this kind of peace. But as far as most people on earth, I would say I don't think so, because it is a spiritual experience. And I think a lot of people may not have experienced that on earth, and many people may not even know what love is. They've never run into it before. They come from, you know, broken families. They come from many uh, things that will keep them from having or being able to experience this. They just are not surrounded by people who are full of love or experienced it in any way, shape or form. I wanted to mention a term when you were talking about the disco ball. And there was a term <laughs> last year that I came across. It's soul fractals. Have you ever heard of soul fractals? Oh, Yes. Okay. Yeah, of course. Of course you heard of soul <laughs> fractals. So yeah, soul fractals. We are, when I think of a diamond and then the cuts of a diamond and the different lights, as you look at a diamond underneath the light and you will see different colors and it's projected out via the different cuts of each diamond. And the surface of a diamond, it's same metaphor, different object. I guess the perceived definition of love in different cultures, because I've lived abroad and I come from a Vietnamese background. And so I lived in Italy, Kosovo, a little stint in Germany, but I've traveled around the world and South America and things like that. In the Vietnamese culture, Jody, there's a lot of abuse, like physical abuse. And I remember I was visiting back in, uh, in Vietnam, we went to go pick up our laundry and next to the laundry was this woman's home and it was an alleyway and there was a baby in a walker and she was feeding the baby. The baby was probably like, I don't know, maybe about like eight months or so. And I was standing there and I was looking at her and because the baby wasn't eating, as fast as she wanted him to, she was hitting him, knocking his head with her hand. And, but she was doing it so hard. He started crying. So she was saying in Vietnamese, she was like, tung wa, tung wa, wa, which is, I love you so much. I love you so much. As she was knocking his head and he was crying. I'm looking at that as a Vietnamese American born in America. And I looked at that. I was like, that's abuse. He's, she's abusing him. She's abusing him. To her, that was love. Even when I was in Kosovo, I was the only international hypnotherapist in Kosovo. It wasn't open per se. Not many people were traveling to the Balkans during that time. And there is so much toxic shame that flows within these families. And as I had clients before, and I still have clients now to this day in Kosovo, and we unravel the toxic shame of these dysfunctional families that are webbed, but there's love there. There's love, that love of the generational patterns. It's generational love. I always question, is that love? That's their perception of love. That's a generational love. It's a generational patterns. It's generational behaviorisms. And as we talk about love and the breakdown of it, I know in my heart and soul, what self-nourishment and self-love and love feels like. 
I feel it. I know it. And it took me a long time to get here. As I've traveled the world and just do the daily life, how many people really know love? What can we do to help those see differently than what they feel is love? Basically, love and light, they seem to be the underlying basis of everything that we see from unearthly beings who can appear in NDEs looking like stars Mm. or who are surrounded by light to the intense emotions of love, peace, and compassion to being an integral part of instantaneous knowledge and a universal matrix of connection. So I ask you, is it possible to alter our state of consciousness to be more connected to God? Because if you are, if you can, then you are more connected to love and connect to all the parts of love and light that we see in the NDE. And I know that NDEers would say, yes, this is possible. The big question is how do you bring this multidimensional love to a 3D reality? You are going the same place where I was. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) The answer is by bringing more love into our lives, we can access that greater portion of God within each and every one of us. And the stronger that connection is with God, the more we are able to utilize the other dimensional aspects of love. And so you do it with, like, for instance, meditation. You do it by helping others. You do it by loving yourself, setting your boundaries, keeping your self-worth, finding your self-esteem, and being able to help others find their self-esteem. And these are actually fairly basic core things that you can do that will allow you to be able to reach out and to find your soul, your spirit, and to bring that back with you so that you can help transform your reality here on earth. It is so simple what you just listed off. (laughs) It's hard. It's really hard. hard. (laughs) You know, it's really interesting. It's so simple. And when I have given the most simplest instruction, the most very clear two liners, simple, go do it. And it was always interesting because I would have five questions come back in exactly how to do it. And the framework and the structure of being right or doing it right or whatever right would look like. And I would respond with however you're feeling at that moment, it is perfect. So go do it because it's in the doing, it's in the doing and the action that really, really matters. It really goes with putting forth the action and doing just the most simplest movements to create ourselves. And so we could co-create with the universe and co-create with source and co-create with God or Allah or Buddha, whoever, whoever, and whatever the name may be for each person. But It's the co-creation, but we have to understand that we are also the creator. I think that we could probably go back to what we had talked about with the fractal. Mm. And I think what's interesting about the fractal is it goes back to like a holograph. And if you look at a holograph, basically it's like the, for instance, Princess Leah when she comes out in Star Wars, she comes out of the R2-D2 and she's just like this full body projection, 3D projection of a person speaking. And what's interesting is that type of a projection is you can take the plate and you can break it, you can smash it. And each individual piece of that holographic plate will contain an image of Princess Leah. What's really cool is if you put that into God and you look at us as being a holograph and when somebody looks at our plate, this three dimensional being that happens to be on earth, you're going to see that each one of us has a piece of God in us because of this holographic principle. And to me, that's very exciting because then you can say that everybody can be saved. 
we all have access to all of the things that are on the other side because we are a part of God. And so to me, just thinking like that, this holographic or a piece of that disco ball has God in it. Actually, each each square has We a piece are of the God. disco ball. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. We are exactly the disco ball. As you were talking about the holographic <laughs> the holographic <laughs> Princess Leia. My heart was just jumped for joy because I looked at you and I'm like, this is why we became friends. <laughs> like this is why <laughs> we became friends. You speak my language so well, and I understand every aspect of what you're saying. And I agree, even though, yes, we do have different perceptions on other topics, but mainly the way that you describe the ability of the fractal, the soul fractal of God within each and every single human on this earth plane And the ability that, yes, we can really create heaven on earth. Okay, it might take a thousand years, 10,000 years, a hundred thousand years, but it's in the evolution. And even if it's not in our lifetime to for the impact that each one of us does for this lifetime, I feel within my heart and soul and soul fractal being that we we can absolutely detach from the end result, even for this lifetime, if we know it's for the greater good of the earth, of humanity, of it all. And we are literally watching right now the end of a chapter, the end of a book for the new book to arrive. But the book has to be written. A new book has to be written. And we are all the writers of this book. So what are we going to contribute? What are we going to write? Oh, this sings to my heart. (laughs) Well, uh, that's why we're doing this podcast is because not only are we helping to write it, but Mm -hmm. we're encouraging others to also write the book. Mm -hmm. Because basically, instead of the doom and gloom thing that a lot of people are coming up with and, oh, into the world, you know, instead of doing that, What happens if you take that energy and you put it towards creating something really good? Now, if you've got everybody doing that, it's sure going to change the world a lot more than what we've got now. Well, I have a friend, a shaman in, he's now currently in New Mexico. His name is Jade. He's a Mongolian elder shaman. He said something so beautiful and so powerful. He said, focused energy is power. And A lot of times when we talk about focusing, you know, where your mind goes, your energy flows. When I heard that, another light lit up within me. And my thought process was, if one person could have this focused energy and really braid our lights together. A lot of people talk about the conscious, you know, the collective consciousness and things like that. But what if in this collective consciousness of everyone waking up, There was the ability to braid our lights together to really focus our power, right? Focused energy equals power and focus our power into certain aspects of this world, into topics, into subjects, and really shine our light into the darkest vortexes. Bring the love, bring Mm -hmm. the love and the light. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Yeah. Love. Is it also a choice? It's part Mm. of our free will. And you start by being loving with yourself. You always choose to do loving acts. And if you've got a choice between a loving act or a an action that you may not be aware that you're doing, you know, try to maintain a conscious way about you so that you will pay attention to things that may be habit. And by paying attention to things, you'll be able to change them so that you'll be able to be a a better loving person and be able to share that love with other people. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Awareness to bring about action. 